VR games give VR a bad rep. If you want to take one look at literally every meta showcase that happens, like the one that just happened, you can see for yourself how disappointed people get. But it's kind of for a good reason. Games just don't do VR justice. I'm not that interested in Sussy Among Us and I'm bored of Beat Saber. I'm just kind of burnt out on games in general. But the reason I'm so invested in virtual reality extends to media way outside of just gaming. There's a lot of stuff that's never been possible before in the history of mankind ever, and we're literally just getting here right now. Hey guys, I'm Fia, and this is the Virtual Reality Show! We're going to dive into the future of VR entertainment today and see what's already possible right now. I think the best place to start with is films. Hollywood has always reigned as the largest entertainment industry, and there's something really special here about being able to step inside your favorite movies. One of my favorite VR experiences that I've covered before on this channel is First Step, a 3D 360 film where you get to watch the hyper-real Apollo 11 mission to the moon firsthand. You might have seen the Apollo 11 movie a few years back, but now imagine that instead of watching other people experience space, you have the opportunity to fly above the moon's horizon in the vastness of empty space and feel the presence of an actual human astronaut inside of a spaceship next to you. In flat films, you are guided by whatever the camera wants to show you, and there's a strong level of separation as you act purely as an observer. Through VR, you immersively become a part of the film. You are the camera. However, there's more potential here than just being a camera. You can also be a participant through story interaction. This is where gaming and film come together as one in a way that's never been possible before. In a film like Madrid Noir, the main character speaks to you as if you're a friend. She asks you to hand her stuff, which makes you feel like a character. During the narration scenes, you also interact through using things like pointing a flashlight to pinpoint particular focus points in the environment. I think this is something that's extremely unexplored at this point in time. You can be a main character, an invisible force, or a pure spectator, but the main constant is the contrast between watching a movie versus being in the movie. I think a theoretical fun idea could be something like a choose your own adventure book, but you actually make the physical actions that shift the story forward. There's also the potential of reimagining existing franchises. Imagine how much cooler Dune would be seeing the giant sandworm towering over you, or nervously experiencing vertigo standing over the Sarlacc pit. But more so than that, I hope to see entire franchises built from the ground up for virtual reality. Franchises that push boundaries by forcing players into fantastical worlds that twist your emotions so tight that when you take off your headset, you just stare at the ceiling for an hour contemplating everything. Next, I want to talk about music videos. One of my favorite music artists is Mondo Grosso. Shinichi Osawa, the man behind the project, ended up working with Obake, who you might remember from my clubbing video, to create this VR chat world music video. You just sit down on a seat and voila, you are completely immersed inside the music and visionary world that goes alongside it. I've seen people make VR visualizer worlds, recreate concerts, and there's even full on music festivals, which I'll get to next. An idea that I'd love to see happen might seem kind of out there, but I've always been a big fan of the end opera that features Hatsune Miku. It's an opera that premiered in France 2013 as an entire story about this virtual being having an existential crisis about facing death. It's really atmospheric and tells a story through musical lyrics in this uncanny virtual way. Something like this is so perfectly suited for virtual reality. There's a huge difference between watching a virtual pop idol have an existential crisis versus being in closed her mind in world experiencing it with her. Shifting back to the music festival topic, I think it's time to move on to the potentials of live performances in VR. My friend Sly started a music festival in VR chat called Slyfest, where anyone from the entire world can gather into a music venue filled with dancing avatars and colorful visual effects to listen to electronic music with big headliners. If you watched my clubbing video I recently made, you're already familiar with the underground club events where DJs play live from inside their headsets on the weekends with crazy visuals. 
But it gets even more crazy. This weekend, actually, one of my favorite clubs, Shelter, is doing an IRL event in New York City where there's going to be a, quote, portal to VR as a VR chat version of the event plays out at the exact same time so that users can interact with one another from alternate realities. I'll be there in person, so if you do want to see how all that plays out, you can just follow my Twitter. I was a theater kid, I'll admit it. I love acting. And that's why I was so excited when I got to play as a main character in the show Welcome to Respite. They had me put on an androgynous avatar of a seven-year-old named Alex that picked my pronouns before the show. My character had dissociative identity disorder, and the performance explored childhood trauma by placing you in the shoes of a kid with family issues. I can't explain what a weird but incredible experience this was for me. I literally felt like a kid again, looking up at my parents, who were played by real people who asked me questions and took care of me. These weird emotions of childhood flooded back to me getting tucked into bed and I found it to be dumbfounding thinking about this whole idea of experiencing different parts of your personality or other people's lives entirely. I think there's huge potential for this in the future and this show was the first of its kind. I've joined other VR theatrical performances as well, but I've got to admit, there's just something special about being surrounded by real people as actors. It's more than just watching a film or playing a game because that's all pre-done. This is immersive role-playing. Because VR allows for environments, effects, and character models that aren't possible physically, there is so much more imagination that could be utilized in the future as VR tech progresses. I think we should brief over education for a moment. I don't think it necessarily equals entertainment in all scenarios, like classrooms, Blech. but rather entertainment in the way of watching a documentary about ancient Egyptians, but actually being in ancient Egypt. David Attenborough might tell you about blue whales, and a massive blue whale actually swims by, and it's even larger than you could have imagined. You can basically think of your VR headset as the magic school bus, and I think that's freaking awesome. So when it comes to socializing, VR is special because you can meet anyone from any part of the world and feel like they're actually there. Virtual Market is a convention that happens multiple times a year from inside here in VR chat. Anyone can apply to open up a booth and boy do they do. People show off their assets, shaders, and avatars complete with samples so that you can explore 3D creations and throw down some cash on their creators. Big companies like Disney already collaborate with VKET for special booths. Conventions and expos could be used for anything though, music and comics included. In the future, I'd expect media companies such as TMG to organize large-scale VR events similar to stuff like TwitchCon. It's accessible from your living room and you don't have to pay for travel expenses. I think this will become a pretty common additional option for events in the future as it's incredibly more accessible for mass amounts of people and it's additional income for the hosts. Most people consider social media as a form of entertainment as well. I imagine an Instagram style app in the future where you can swipe through immersive user generated content and designs with like features and algorithms as more and more people are now learning 3D. On the other side of social media, a dating app called Nevermet recently came out designed for finding a romantic partner, where instead of looks and locality, you swipe to match with other avatars. This is something I have a lot of excitement about as I found my partner because of VR as well. I actually joined their advisory board and want to make a video about it next. I think this is an idea that could be implemented into VR in the future, like having a VR phone overlay or something, but the whole idea of turning social media into immersive experiences to network and meet people is really appealing to me, especially the whole VR phone concept, which pretty easily transitions into our final category. Mixing VR and IRL, usually known as mixed reality. The only current examples I can think of that are worth mentioning is the Shelter IRL event that I mentioned before in the live performance section. However, I think there's some even crazier ideas than that. I'm talking like full-scale ARG style stuff. Like you would solve puzzles in the physical world on your phone and then maybe that unlocks something in the VR application. Or imagine this, you catch Pokemon on Pokemon Go, but then the Pokemon you catch are added to your party in the big Pokemon VR RPG game. I know that technically counts as gaming, but I also feel like it's on a whole nother level that should be at least mentioned. So there we have it, the future of VR entertainment. We're still at the very beginning of all of this and the potentials are infinite as you can see. I'm actually really curious what your own ideas are. So if you want, go ahead and leave a comment below. 
But why does all of this matter so much to me? Well, because that's also the future of the virtual reality show. I love YouTube, don't get me wrong, but as my channel grows, we also grow closer to turning it into an immersive entertainment network, leaving 2D videos behind. At least that's my goal. But with that said, I'm actually at the final stages of production on the official VR studio for the virtual reality show. I'm gonna be holding my own events in the near-ish future, so if you wanna support this vision and get special VIP perks, you can join my Patreon before the world is completed this summer. Anyways, thanks so much for hearing my ideas and hopes for the future of entertainment that isn't just games. They truly just don't do VR justice. Please subscribe for more content like this and like the video if you enjoyed it. I've been your host, Fia, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Special thanks to this one's Patreon members. In virtual VIPs, Black Amethyst, Diamond, Kaze Ryu, Mr. Cheerio, Neoplasm, Score Maller, Snake Eight Head.